Katrina is headed. Well, it looks like it's going to continue on this westerly course tonight and through tomorrow. And then over the weekend, it's going to gradually turn to the north, taking advantage of all this warm Gulf of Mexico water. It should strengthen past a Category 3, possibly making landfall as a Category 4 hurricane. That sustained winds at 131 miles an hour or more, somewhere between New Orleans east through Apalachicola, then taking a hard northeasterly turn in through the southeastern United States. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast, making landfall as a Category 3 hurricane with wind speeds of 125 miles per hour. The combination of rain and storm surges caused major flooding. The failure of the levee system in New Orleans allowed for up to 85% of the city to be flooded by water. Over 1,800 people lost their lives and over a million people relocated from their destroyed homes. The traumatic events of Katrina soon influenced photography, media, and literature with projects such as the HBO series, Trem. I got the rain in my veins. The flood water in my blood makes my heart beat harder. I've got the scent of death and decay in the wind sinking into my nose and under my skin. She's a music in my ears and a mold in my soul. Move with her like bellies to Congo drums. By the sign to her, serenade her, recite her a poem. Bump her like sissy bounce, or mellow into her like Marsalis. But I weave through your brain like a song that's moved you and you can't stop the flow. Cause Katrina had foresight and long-term goals. She's the perfect combination of wind and neglect and mirrors criminals in city halls and black robes whose congressional bills pass at levy's expense, whose gavel smacks smash homes and crack domes. Oh, beautiful storm, I won't let you go. Telling their stories, the lingering legacy of the Katrina photographs. An exhibition that shows photos of a devastated New Orleans soon after the storm. Artists created many documentaries, like Nova's Storm That Drowned a City and Spike Lee's projects, When the Levees Broke and If God Is Willing and the Creek Don't Rise. If God is Willing and the Creek Don't Rise is set in New Orleans and explores the restoration efforts after Katrina, the many shortcomings in federal aid, a lack of medical availability, and cleanup efforts after the BP oil spill. Collective descriptions of the city's problems leave the audience feeling a deep sympathy for New Orleans as they experience this area through the eyes of civilians who face new hardships and attempts at restoration. Did you have a scope of what you thought it would be? Tell the story. We visit some people we met in Levees and also systematically just try to do everything as much as we could. What has happened? What has transpired? Since what needs to be done, what has been done, what are people doing, how are people feeling. And so when we pick to come back to fifth year, we know we don't have the crystal ball, we know that the same thing is for the Super Bowl. We do not know that later on, April 20th, the world will change the biggest war disaster. One of the most upsetting issues was the rise in police brutality. Henry Glover was a guy from the Algiers section of New Orleans. On September 2nd, he was allegedly shot by a New Orleans police officer. And a guy named William Tanner rescued him after he'd been shot. And Tanner took him, ironically, to a place where more New Orleans police officers were camped out because Tanner thought that that was the best way to get him medical help because it was too far to go to the hospital. U.S. Attorney Jim Letton says this man, David Warren, shot and killed Glover in Algiers. Letton then says these two officers, Dwayne Sherman and Greg McRae, took the car Glover was in and burned it with him inside, all in an effort to cover up the crime. And finally, prosecutors say these two officers, Robert Italiano and Travis McCabe, falsified reports and an attempt to throw off the FBI. What has been pled to in criminal court 
federal criminal court by these former officers is an insult to this community and an insult to the men and women of policing who wear their badge with pride. These atrocities have also paved the way to change. The first thing that I had to get done when we came back was appoint a new Public Integrity Bureau commander. And I chose to appoint someone who was not a career police officer. The first order of business is bringing back the public trust and making community people feel comfortable coming to us, letting us know when they know of and see police misconduct and feel confident that I'm going to do a fair and thorough investigation. You have to understand, I have no ties to the police department. I'm a civilian. I'm an attorney who has a license to uphold. I have been charged with upholding truth. And what Mayor Landrieu sat me down and said to me is that all he wants is the truth. And this department, I believe, has a very, very, very long way to go. It's going to be my number one priority. If I don't get anything else done as mayor of this city, that department has to get reorganized. They have to help make the citizens safe. This is the New Orleans Katrina Memorial, designed to look like a hurricane. This place holds the bodies of Katrina's victims buried on site. All of these works attempt to tell the stories of victims and shed light on their hardship, but also to inspire people to help them to move on and continue living.